Hello everyone. Oh my goodness, you came back. Welcome to episode two of the Be a Little Extra series in your classroom. And today I want to talk about student engagement. <clears throat> but first, I have to tell you that I am a huge prop thief. Now today, I stole my daughter's headband. And the kids loved it. So I wore this in class today. And it's so hot today that in between every class, I had to walk outside to cool down because it's hot and we don't have AC. And the room that I teach in is, it's kind of funny because it's, um, it's really not part of the house. So I rent, I can't wait until I own, but I rent my house. And this room that I'm in right now used to be a back porch or a back patio and when they added to it they literally threw walls up and um, put the paneling on painted it put a ceiling on there's a roof over it but there's no insulation there's no insulation in the floor there's no insulation in the walls so in the winter this room is freezing and in the summer this room is like dreadfully hot it's like being locked in a car but I like it because I can be here and my kids can be out there making noise and I don't have to be like, and there, there were times where I'd be like, you know, I'd be like, eh, you know, teaching or whatever. And like behind the scenes, you can't see that I'm like throwing toys at them. Like, shut up. And they would know that, you know, when this popped them in the face, <laughs> they were supposed to be quiet <laughs> because kids can get a little too loud. So anyways, oh, I don't recommend throwing toys at your kids. I only chose soft ones or pillows, and um, I didn't really hit them in the face. And they laughed, and then they were quiet. But anyways, I'm in this sweating back room, so I don't have to throw things at my kids anymore. And uh, they can play, like, say my daughter will play on video games. And <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand what's so amusing about it. But she'll be playing Roblox on the Xbox and be like, <laughs> I hope she can't hear me making this video. She's going to kill me. So, anyways, today I wanted to talk about student engagement and different ways that you can get that kid that just doesn't want to participate to participate. So, the very first thing that you should all have in your classroom, and I don't care what it looks like, you need to have at least one puppet. And I have many. I have the farm animals. Um, there's a Melissa and Doug set. My pig's out in the kitchen, so I can't show him to you. But there's a Melissa and Doug set that comes with a horse, sorry, a horse, a cow, and a pig. Um, I got this off of Wish, and it's a really cute puppet because um, it fits your hand like this, so you can like hello and run so you're doing the walking 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 hop 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 running 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 now let's stop okay puppets are fun if you're just in it, if you are just starting out you probably have a ton of pre-k trials and maybe you don't have a ton of classes yet, but once you do, they're all going to be Hello Monkey pre-K trials. And there's a couple of things that I want to um, suggest to you to be able to get your kids to participate. Because I want you to remember, yes, some of these kids are coming in from different companies. Some of these kids take English in school. Some of these kids have done some form of online tutoring before, but a lot of them, you know, for instance, your two-year-olds, your three-year-olds, your four-year-olds, a lot of them have never done that before. And those are also the ages where they tend to be like stranger danger and they don't want to talk to you. So there are ways that you can get your student to engage with you. First of all, have a monkey. I don't care if it's a monkey pump it. I don't care if it's a monkey stuffed animal. It doesn't even have, you can put a monkey on a stick. For the monkey, I do suggest to have a stuffed monkey though. They're easy to find and they're more interactive with the kids. So you've got your monkey here. 
and part of it is hello monkey so I go through the hello song with them we go to the next page I circle the monkey monkey oh oh they didn't say anything what do I do TPR what monkey <gasps> yes very good whatever maybe they don't do it just skip that then um, so then the monkey comes out monkey <gasps> hello monkey and for the really quiet kids that are like Marker, or maybe they're not even participating at all I don't know if the parents dislike this <laughs> And I apologize to any parents in China that um, I have made upset about this, but I will scream. <laughs> Not like really scream, but it makes the kids participate because they think it's funny, you know, because kids like to scream. So <clears throat> throughout the lesson, I'll be like, monkey! Whoop! Oh, hello, monkey! Monkey! Hello, monkey! Monkey! Hello, monkey! So it gets the kids to do it with you because if they can scream, it's funny. Things like that are funny. Another thing that is really funny to kids, especially little kids, and I don't know why, is smelly feet. This puppet I got from M eBay. I got this puppet from eBay. Um, and while he does have a crooked nose, nobody has ever pointed it out. This puppet I love because it has very clear feet and very clear hands. Most puppets do not have feet, so this one is awesome. Because it's a nose, mouth, eyes. They are eyes. Eyes. La 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 la. What are these? They are ears. Ears. Bring it close to the camera and try to make it as 3D as you can. You're behind a computer, or I'm behind a computer monitor. You're behind some like computer type surface for the child. So just try to make it as interactive and 3D as possible. What are these? They are feet. Feet. What are these? They are hands. Hands. Clap, 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 clap. Okay, that's how I do that. Um, so smelly feet is something that you can use in so many of the lessons. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And you can use them for when you're doing body parts. You can use them for socks. Uh, I'm sure there's other things. I use it pretty much every day with at least one student, I would say. And I will come over here and say I've, I've got this, you know, I'm teaching the kids body parts. And I'll, ooh, wee, stinky feet. Blech, blech. And... The kids will laugh and they will show me their foot. Their foot, their foot, their foot will come right into the camera. And I'll, oh, stinky feet. No, no. They think it's funny. They're picking on their teacher and it's hilarious and I'm okay with it. Just be aware that when you do this, that sock will be coming in your camera's view like for probably at least 15 out of the 25 minutes of your class. And that's okay because you just ignore it and don't give it any of attention until you think that they need a little break from, you know, and then you can pick it up again. But um, just, you know, it's fun. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what else was there? Student engagement. So you've got the, the stinky feet. Um, you could do that for the socks. What is it? It's a sock. Ew! Sock! Ooh! -ee. Be dramatic. It's funny. Um, Pre-K level. I love teaching the pre-K kids. Can you tell? So pre-K level, another way to increase student engagement is to be a weirdo. 
like the same way that you would be with your baby at home. So you're teaching mouth. What is it? <gasps> it's a mouth. No. <laughs> I'm like, what is it? Mouth. <gasps> mouth. The kids laugh. A kid's laughter, a student's laughter is like a door into their empty internal bookshelf that you can just start to stack full of knowledge. They're giving you entrance when they laugh. It really is a thing. I just made it up right now. And it really is a thing. <laughs> like, as soon as you get them laughing, they start opening up to you. And eventually, they will open up all the way, and they'll be participating fully, and that is something that will make you cry, and you have to hold it back because mom's usually right there, and you don't want to look like a weirdo, okay? So for mouth, I'll go, mouth, just whatever you want to do. Nose, 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 okay? Eyes. I do, I basically do two things with eyes. No, three things. There's an eyeglass filter you can put on. Sometimes I'll do that, but there are way more fun ways to do it. Little kids love peekaboo. So, eyes. <gasps> eyes. What are these? They are eyes. Okay. So you can use that for student engagement. Um, a lot of times they won't say something. Make Just make sure you cup your ear. Go like this. You can use a puppet too. Um, I don't usually. I don't ever actually, but you can. Be like, what? what's your name? Okay, what's your name? And they're like, my name is not participating in class today. I'm not doing this. Okay, who am I? What's your name? And I always say, My name is Michael. If I know their English name. But you could also be like, oh, What's your name? My name is Tony. Hi, Tony. How are you? I'm great. Yes, I really just did that. <laughs> um... So you can, you can do things like that and then be like, what's your name? My name is Tony. What's your name? They might participate then. If they don't, you can't spend 25 minutes trying to grill the kid to get them to tell you what your name is because you don't understand their Chinese name or you can't read it or they have some silly name in there. That You know, get over it. You don't have to call them a name, okay? I had a student and... He is three years old. When he first came into class, he had no interest in participating. And if you've had those classes before, those are the longest 25 minutes because it's you talking to yourself, talking to yourself, talking to yourself, and then feeling like brought down because they're not talking back to you. And it's totally okay. It's totally okay because keep going, they're listening. For this particular student, it was a confidence issue. So after we had gone through a few of the lessons, he would start saying things that he knew were right. So then he'd be like, eyes, mouth, nose. He would say those, but he wouldn't say it in a sentence. Well, <clears throat> we played a game. I had him in class yesterday, and we played a game. Basically, there's a Ferris wheel. And the student's picture goes in the middle of the Ferris wheel. And there are different, um, what would you call them, like carts or whatever on the Ferris wheel. And they each have like a Simon Says picture in there. So I would be like, touch your nose. And he's in the middle and he touches his nose. Okay? So when we were done with him playing the game, I put me in the center. And I said, you say, teacher, touch your nose. And then he said, teacher, touch your nose. And then independently, he did the rest of them on the slide. Teacher, clap your hands. Teacher, stomp your feet. Whatever else was on there. I was so proud of him. This was my one-word student that didn't even bother to parrot. 
He he's just soaking everything in like a little sponge and waiting until he felt okay. And the more I get him to laugh, the more he's opened up. The more classes we do together, the more comfortable he feels. And now he's he's actually participating in full sentences when I ask him to. And they're new things too. Never in the history of his his life has he ever had to say, teacher, touch your nose. And he was able to do it the first time without having to gain that confidence because there was that comfort level. There was that bond between us. And that's another thing. When these students are coming in here, they're, they may be very uncomfortable with you. Like, oh my God, this YouTube video is talking to me. What do I do now? Oh my God. Little trick. Back with the puppet. With the stinky feet. You don't have to talk to him. Hello. <clears throat> Hello, Mark. <gasps> my name is Panda. What's your name? <gasps> Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm great. And I also do this with one of my regular students. She brings in a different toy every day to say hello, so I bring in a different toy every day. So she might bring in Pig wearing his butterfly costume. That's a, a toy she has. I don't know whether to call it Pig or Butterfly. I usually go with Pig. So I'll bring in a different toy. <clears throat> Sorry, it's on the floor. <gasps> I'll say, who is your friend today? Who did you bring? Show me. And she'll bring up and be like, oh, hello, Pig. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Pig. Hello, Sarah. And then we kind of talk like that. That's one more thing that I really want you to pay attention to is what toys they have. If they, can, if they come in with a dinosaur, then if you have a dinosaur, bring it out. If they come in wearing a tiara, put a tiara on yourself if you have one. If you have a similar prop, bring it up because now you relate to them. And you're like, they're like, oh, my teacher is like me. My teacher loves my little pony too. If they come out with a Paw Patrol character, say, oh my goodness, is that Marshall? Hi, Marshall! So pay attention to their surroundings. They might have mom there. Very, very often, you're going to get a child that comes into class. He's a three-year-old. He's a four-year-old. He comes into class, and he's sitting on mom's lap or on dad's lap. And he won't touch his nose. You say, touch your nose. Touch your nose. And they're not touching their nose. What can you do? Can you touch mama's nose? <gasps> touch mom's nose. And then they touch mom's nose or they touch dad's nose. And because their mom that's holding them is someone that they're comfortable with. They have touched their mom's nose before. They've ripped those glasses off her face and thrown them across the room. They're comfortable with scrunching up the faces and pulling and grabbing their mother's face. So they're comfortable touching their mother's nose. You've now brought them into a safe place with their mommy. And that's okay. It's totally okay. And a bonus to this is it also involves the mom. So the mom's like, oh, I am in the class now. I get to do this with my kid. It's not just me watching anymore. And it makes them feel really good. Um... Sometimes they'll come on camera and you can say, hi, mom. Sometimes they're just kind of off to the side and you can't see them and you just assume they're touching the nose and that's okay. Um, you know, if they're doing that off the camera, mom's going to correct them if they touch their mouth or something instead of their nose. Um, so that's, that's okay too. So those are my tips on student engagement. Oh, 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 I have one more awesome tip that I always like to use. And actually, um... <clears throat> I have several tips, but this is already a 20 minute video, so I'm not going to give you many more right now because otherwise you'll be bored to death if you aren't already. So the kid's not participating, okay? 
you, they put the app in the background. They walk away from the camera. They turn around and they're crying to their mom. Okay. Whatever they're doing. <sighs> in the winter, I had a blanket here so I could do it with a blanket, but it's too hot for that. <sighs> Hello. You've got the kids' attention and they're laughing because you're weird. Okay? So you do it again. <sighs> Wake up, teacher. <sighs> and they will usually say, Wake up, teacher. Because they know that they're about to get that same reaction that they liked the first time. That's another trick that I like to use. So just remember that your children are coming in. They've had long days at school. They maybe have never been in front of a camera before. The filters may or may not be distracting. Um, you might be a weirdo to them. You know, you weird American. You weird Canadian. You weird Englishman. I don't know. Like, I mean, you just might be weird to them. And... They're like uncomfortable with you because I'm not supposed to talk to strangers and they don't come any stranger than teacher Joe. Ooh. So there, there's, these are some ways that you can engage them and you are a stranger to them. Try to bring them in their safe place, whether it be with a puppet that they might like, a toy that they might like, um, bringing their mom or dad into it. Just try to bring them into their safe place and they will open up with you faster and you'll get more of a student engagement response by doing that. So I am logging off today. I think I said everything that I wanted to. We did a song, which I know was like a top request, right? And we have talked about how to involve your students. If there is anything that you would like to add, post it in the comments below. If there is anything that you would like to hear from me, post it in the comments below. If you like my headband or this video, like this video and subscribe. And if you have not already signed up to be a teacher on Palefish, then the link is in the box, in the info box on the YouTube video. Click that link. I will connect with you and guide you through the process of becoming an English teacher and having the most amazing work from home job that I have ever heard of. Seriously, I get paid to be weird and wear unicorn headbands. Most jobs, I can't even do this and they don't appreciate my weirdness. So that's day two of how to be a little extra on my extra series. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.